Mr. P's Science and Math Podcasts. For more science and math concepts, search me out on iTunes by typing Papa Podcasts. You can contact me at Mr. P. Lieberman at gmail.com. Thank you for watching. Graphing parabolas, quadratic functions, understanding the importance and value of A. Okay, part one. We're going to be looking at the importance of the value A here as we have in this expression. Y is equal to AX squared. And what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at A in the positive form. Graphing y is equal to ax squared. Before learning the easy way to graph quadratic functions, we must understand what a quadratic function is. A quadratic function in mathematics is a polynomial function of the form fx is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where a cannot equal to zero. If, and here the, the reason why this importance, if a was equal to zero, What's left in this function? Well, we're only going to be left with bx plus c. bx plus c is what we call a linear expression. But we're looking at quadratic. So the important part of a quadratic function is to make sure that we have our value of or more importantly here, this x squared value, okay? And here it says in, the fi in this final expression here, uh, the expression ax squared plus bx plus c in the definition of a quadratic function is a polynomial of degree 2 or second degree polynomial, whatever you want to use, because the highest exponent of x is 2. So when the highest exponent of x is 2, okay, we have a quadratic function. So that's why it is important that a cannot equal to zero because if a is equal to zero we cannot have this x to the power of two. We cannot have this second degree. Quadratic functions give us a graph forming a parabola such as the following. A parabola either opening upwards or opening downwards. Today we're only going to investigate going upwards. Okay, but eventually we will be looking at when parabolas do go downwards. Let's graph the following. Y is equal to x squared. So when graphing parabolas, just as we would with linear equations, we complete a table of values. Notice the values of x I use as they will be important pretty much when we're talking about quadratic functions. So what I want you to do is pause this podcast and I want you to complete the following table of values. Just complete the y values. Pause it right now. Okay, so we're back. Now, Let's look at what you should have in terms of your table of values. So when x is equal to negative 3, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be substituting into the value of x all these values and trying to find what y value we get in return. So let's look at the first one. So when x is equal to negative 3, y is 9. When x is equal to negative 2, we get 4. When x is negative 1, we get 1. When x is 0, y is also 0. When x is 1, 1. When x is 2, y is 4. And when x is 3, y is 9. Okay. And if you notice right now, you can see why I chose these values specifically for my x value. Okay. The reason is, is because, well, if I stopped here, and I just chose these values. I don't know what's going to happen beyond these numbers. So what I want to show here is really the importance about how really, notice how these numbers here are the same as these numbers. And that's what's going to play a very, very important role in graphing all types of quadratic functions. So now, before we do that, 
we want to look at what we call the first difference. Okay, so here we have the first difference. And if we look at the first difference in linear expressions, linear expressions, the first difference was they were all the same. But in quadratic functions, let's look at what the first difference is. And the first difference would be, well, when we're subtracting, let's say, 9 minus 4, we get 5. If we subtract 4 minus 1, we get 3. If we subtract 1 minus 0, we get 1. If we subtract 0 minus 1, we get negative 1. If we subtract 1 minus 4, we get negative 3. And if we subtract 4 minus 9, we get negative 5. So because the first difference are all different, therefore not linear. So we know that the following expression, y is equal to x squared, is not linear because the first difference, all our numbers are completely different. So now, we're going to go and look at our second difference. So from 5 to 3, and all we're going to be looking at is the, the difference in the number. We're, who cares? We're not going to focus on... Um, in terms of um, positive and negative, we're just going to be looking at what is the span apart in the first difference with re respect to the second difference. And so from 5 to 3, we have a difference of 2. From 3 to 1, we have a difference of 2. From 1 to negative 1, we have a difference of 2. From negative 1 to 3, negative 3, we have, uh, sorry, from negative 3 to negative 5, we have also a difference of 2. So because our second difference is the same, what does that mean? Well, it means, therefore, that the expression okay, is quadratic. Okay? So it means that our expression is a quadratic function. So let's uh, look at the following here. So we've looked at the differences. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take that and we're going to graph it, okay? So because the first, and, and let's just kind of recap. Because the first difference is different from one another, we know that the function is not linear. And that's because, and that's that, okay? The first difference. So we know that it's not linear. Now, when we take the second difference, we observe that the quadratic function, okay, because the second difference are all the same. And that's pretty much what makes it quadratic. Okay, so let's take these values and let's graph the expression y is equal to x squared. Here is what we get. Okay, 